Mexico. Today we're here to demonstrate how to use Dr. PRP in your office or in your surgery suite. First, Stop. you're going to need to use a accessory kit to draw blood. In the accessory kit, you will have all of the components that are necessary to do the phlebotomy and to process the blood. There is an 18 gauge phlebotomy butterfly. There is a 20 cc syringe. There are blunt needles for the blood transfer, a bandage, alcohol swab, gauze, and some tape. Besides the accessory kit, we have the Dr. PRP kit that comes with either an ACD, either in a 30 or two and a half, half cc ACD. The first thing that you're going to want to do is draw two and a half to three cc's of ACDA and a coagulant into your 20 cc syringe. Oops. So you'll attach the needle, draw the ACD, the anticoagulant, into the syringe. Okay. Okay. Stop. Okay. Step now then you is can to about. switch out the ACD needle with your blood draw needle, all of these being 18 gauge. Then you are going to push your anticoagulant through this capillary tube all the way up through the needle. So the minute that you insert the needle into the vein, the blood will automatically be come into contact with the ACD. Okay, we've drawn the blood, but before we put it into the kit, we want to talk about it just a little bit and explain to you what the working components are of the kit and how it operates. You have an injection port up at the top and a, a removable silicone lid, but we're not going to, that's for later. The working mechanisms of the kit are this blue round tube which is connected to this rod. Inside there is a floating silicone shelf and that is part of the um, working mechanism that will later push your platelets up to where you want it want them to be. Now that we've drawn the blood we're going to show you basically how to go ahead and get the first spin done. So, here's a kit. We peel the kit out. Here's our blood, what we've done. We've basically have taken it from the patient. We're going to make sure we just mix the ACD up real good. We have an 18 gauge needle. What we're going to do is, is pierce the silicone cap. We don't want to create an airlock in the hourglass neck. So what we're going to do is we're going to push the blood at a 45 degree angle slowly. And as you see, as the blood rises, it's going to fill the lower chamber first. And as the blood rises, we're going to invert it straight up to 90 degrees until the blood fills up. There are now two on each side. There's a 10 cc increment level and a 20 cc. We are going to fill our chamber up to 20 cc since we drew a 20 cc sample. Go ahead, the start. kits are calibrated specifically for a 20 cc volume. Anything less, anything more, and the kit will not operate properly. Now that we have got our blood in the kit, each centrifuge comes with rings. What we're going to do is insert the ring through the kit. The kit rests on these two shoulder ledges on each kit. And then we set it down inside one of these buckets that we call, just like this. And then the bucket rests on these rockers on the rotors. And then you're going to do the exact same thing with your counterweight, which comes with your centrifuge, into the opposite carrier of the centrifuge. 
now that we have the centri now we have them resting in the centrifuge, the counterweight in our sample, we're going to go ahead and do a spin at four minutes at 3,400 cc's. On RPM, not RCS. RPM setting. So, and hit start. This is after the spin. This is what we consider a perfect separation. Anything at this ridge or slightly below is really a perfect separation. If you look real closely, you can see the platelets floating right on top of that red blood cell layer. And they sort of slosh around right on the top. Sorry. Now what we're going to attempt to do is to take our product and move it all the way up into the upper chamber. The portion that we're interested in are these platelets right here in this top portion of the kit. And we move that upward into the neck of the processing tube by slowly and gently pushing up with our thumb on this knob right here, which will elevate that silicone shelf that we talked about earlier, pushing all of these platelets into this upper chamber and into the neck. So I'm going to attempt to do that now. And the more you do this, the more familiar you will become with the tension necessary. And as you can see, that level is slowly, slowly rising up into the neck and that narrow portion of the kit. And as you get up into the bottleneck, you slowly want to make sure you're observing if you want to keep pure yellow product or you want to add a little red cells. Okay, if you wanted a completely yellow product, this is where you would stop. If you wanted to make sure you got all of your platelets, and you would also get some leukocytes and perhaps some red blood cells in there, you would continue to push up into the chamber. But for today's product, we're going to get a completely yellow product. We may make eye drops with this, so we're going to stop right here. And we're going to start to close these chambers off, which will completely separate our final product from our red blood cells. And we do that by rotating and turning counterclockwise this lower blue knob at the bottom of the kit until it can't turn anymore. Then we adjust the end cap until it can't turn anymore. Continuing back and forth, adjusting the knob and the end cap until it doesn't turn anymore. And what that will do is push a little rubber stopper, which is on the end of that blue tube, up into this chamber. And it will completely lock off both components. And that is your final product. So if you are going to inject a face, you would just simply, simply shake this and withdraw the product into 1cc syringes. It's ready to inject. So. Take it ready. So. Go. Okay, if you're, if you're going to be doing a, say, like an injection or something like that into a knee, what you might want to do is go ahead and take your concentrated platelets right now and concentrate them even further by basically Go on to the centrifuge and stick it what you have now back down inside here. For a second spin. For a second spin. And what you're going to do is do it for 3,500 for two minutes. Once you've done that, you're going to do, you're going to open the door back up after you've done your second spin. And once again, you're going to draw your product. Now you've super concentrated your final product. We're going to go ahead and once again take the silicone cap out. Now we're going to take a 5cc syringe and we're going to withdraw. We'll take a 5cc syringe and we'll use that 5cc syringe to take it and draw out just a 5cc portion without shaking this container up and withdraw 5cc's from the top. And then remaining 5cc's is your super concentrated portion of your PRP.
Okay, I want to talk a little bit about troubleshooting. Um, and there are major, there are uh, mainly uh, three items that might pop up uh, when you first begin to work with the system. And the first one is an airlock. And an airlock can occur when you are putting the blood into the processing tube and you fail or forget to hold it at a 45 degree angle when you are injecting in the blood. And it will get stuck in this upper chamber. And if that happens, just simply take the processing tube in between your fingers like this and just swing it to the side gently like this to release that airlock and the blood will then start to trickle down into the bottom portion and you can continue finishing filling. The other problem that you may encounter is a patient that may have a high hematocrit and hemoglobin or a low. And in that instance, they will either separate up high or they will separate way, way low. We'll talk about the first one. If they separate up high, the first thing that you would do is just put it back into the centrifuge for an, another spin at 3,500 RPMs for two minutes. And that usually corrects that problem. If they separate low, like way down here, what you would do is just gently shake the product back up put it back into the centrifuge for a lower RPM. You might spin them at 3,200 for four minutes or three minutes. Or 1,800. Or even 1,800. It just depends on what their hematocrit and hemoglobin is. The other problem that you may um, come up to, come up uh, against is um, if you push too much of your final product into this upper chamber and let's say you want a completely yellow product and you're pushing your platelets up into the neck and you accidentally push a little bit too much up in there and you get some red blood cells that you didn't want. It's not really a problem. Just put it back into the centrifuge before you turn and lock any chambers off. Spin it at 3400 for another minute and then you can go again and, and try again to get your um, separation line exactly where you want it.